Mark, Laura, thanks for being here. Um, Mark, first you, uh, what is a community development financial institution? What is a CDFI? Community Development Financial Institutions, or CDFIs, are private sector financial intermediaries, or private sector financial institutions that lend and invest with the purpose of community development or the purpose of creating benefits for low income and low wealth people. What they specialize in is managing risk in distressed marketplaces. And Laura, tell us why city and financial institutions in general uh, need CDFIs. Well, cities had a long history of working with CDFIs. You know, for well over two decades, we've been working with Opportunity Finance Network and with CDFIs around the country, and other financial institutions have as well. The key reason that we do that is because we really want to be organizations that can provide financing solutions to all people and businesses that can use our financing to really drive growth and to build businesses and to build assets that can really help create vibrant communities. Mark, it sounds like we've always needed CDFIs um, because distressed communities have always been you know, part of our society. Um, how do CDFIs come into being? CDFIs have been around in their sort of current form for about 30 years or so. And they're very much a product of what really was the war on poverty and the great society that came out of the 1960s. Things like CDFIs have been around for a long time. They go back well over 100, 150 years. All sorts of what we might think of as self-help credit or self-help finance. It's geographic communities or communities of interest, whatever they are, people have gotten together and, and pooled their money and loaned it or invested it um, in each other because they believe in each other. And um, what happened about 30 or so years ago was that as government tried to do more to create opportunities for low-income and low-wealth people in this communities, in the, starting in the Mississippi Delta and Central Appalachia, but as it, it expanded in other places, we created a thing called Community Development Corporations, or CDCs, that really grew out of that movement. And they were really important because they were the first time that communities had control over their own ability to, to borrow money or to use resources or to get government money and use it on behalf of their own communities. They weren't part of government, they were private, and they could do that. One of the things that that led to was a desire on behalf initially of, of faith-based investors to lend money to these CDCs and to other communities. So faith-based institutions? From the earliest days, three national religious organizations, the Roman Catholic Church, the Episcopal Church, and the Presbyterian Church, put up about $15 million and very quickly lost a share of that, a big share of that. But to their credit, they didn't bail, they didn't run they decided that the problem was that they didn't know how to lend in these markets. That was really key to the early stages of CDFIs. There was a wave that followed that where, where orders of women religious, nuns, were investing their retirement money into these loan funds, particularly. They were run by people who didn't have any lending experience, and they were lending to these organizations that everybody wasn't sure you know, what was going to come of them in some way. And so it was an extraordinary act of faith. But there were two lessons that you learn when you're borrowing the nuns' retirement money. The first is you better do something that's really important. Right? You better really have an impact. You better really do something for the community where you're working. But the second is you better not lose the nun's retirement money. It's a basic rule, right? And so that discipline became really important to, to sort of what's become the CDFI industry today. And although at the time we did it because it was important to our investors who were, who were the sisters, now it's really important in this economy because in order for the banks, in order for city to be able to trust in CDFIs to be able with their money, right, we need to be able to continue that same sort of measure of discipline, that same kind of um, focus and performance that, we, that we've, um, we've had for all those years. So. And I think just building off of that, although it's not nearly enough, I think that's, that's really where the bank CDFI partnership comes into play. You know, large financial institutions like ours have tremendous resources that we can bring to the table, tremendous financial resources that we can try to make available in communities. But we really need CDFIs as that critical bridge to make sure that that capital gets deployed in a responsible and a responsive way. And that really helps us reach uh, low income, low wealth people um, in ways that make sense for communities and that make sense for our business. But Laura, if, if uh, CDFIs get really good at what they do, wouldn't banks want to do that as well? And so isn't there any, is there competition? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think that what we've found over time is really that banks and CDFIs have, have our own strengths and weaknesses. We have some really compelling comparative strengths 
that are different and that the way that we can have the most impact in communities, the way that we can finance the most small businesses and develop the most responsive products is to really put our operating models together in some ways, um, to really capitalize on a CDFI's ability to have very relationship-driven lending, to be very patient in their approach, to have strong uh, working relationships with borrowers that can recognize problems at the earliest stage, um, and to couple that with the economies of scale that a large financial institution can have, with the ability to create automation and centralization, and to really package all of that together to deploy something that's very compelling for communities. And, and I would say that, that CDFIs will go away when banks become CDFIs. That's, 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 what we, that's what we hope for every day. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen for, for reasons Laura's pointing out, which is that we have complementary roles and comp complementary capacities and complementary interests. And so the, the goal is finding the right way of partnering for those. And I, I actually want to call out, just given what we've been through in the last few years, um, um, the, the Communities at Work Fund, which, was, which is a fund that, would, that resulted from an initiative that Citi started. It was an innovation that they brought to the table where they realized that there was a need, we all knew that there was a need to lend to small businesses in this country, particularly in distressed places. And it was hard for them to figure out how to do that, but they knew they had this advantage of CDFIs there to do that. So they brought together the Calvert Foundation, Opportunity Finance Network, um, and the city. Um, to figure out how could we move a large amount of capital through an innovative new pooling mechanism in a high profile way that made people realize that it is possible to lend for job creation, it's possible to lend to small businesses, even, in, even at that point it started during the recession, even during the recession, that it can get done because CDFIs know how to make that happen city brought to the table the capital and some of the expertise in how to structure it. So it's a great example of an innovation that wouldn't have happened otherwise. You know, we talk a lot about responsible finance at city and you know, this is I think a great example of how multiple partners could come together to try to really manifest that, to try to create something that was very real and very responsive, an important way to get responsible finance into communities that at the time didn't have access uh, to capital in the ways that they needed it to try to spur small business development, job creation. Mark, Laura, thank you very much. This has been a great conversation. It's great.